number five tonight. You will turn with me to Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter number four. It's the last verse I'm going to have you turn to today. One of bad experiences happened to me, preacher. Why did I have a, a, a blowout? Why, why have my children gone bad, preacher? Why, why have I lost my job, preacher? Why am I losing my house, preacher? Why have I come face to face today? I could have been out somewhere else riding a motorcycle or on a boat or, or uh, skiing or, or whatever else people do on Sundays, playing golf or going to the Colts ball game or what were you doing? Shooting. You're shooting me? No, okay. Phew. All right. Or doing any, oh, hunting. There you go. Hunting, that's it. Thank you. Whew. Me and my wife, we're sometimes not on the same page, but at least we're in the same book. Amen. But there's a whole thing, a whole bunch of things that people could be doing. And some of you thought, some of the army people thought, man, I could be laying in a tent today enjoying this nice sunshine out on fob. And man, but I'm here in this air conditioned church today doing all of this. Why am I here today? I believe that we're here this morning and why bad things happen in our lives. I believe why God allows certain circumstances to expose us to the truth that we need somebody from the outside to intervene in our lives. Because there are a lot of things in our lives that are just too big for us to handle on our own. Here in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16, the Bible says this, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Preacher, you don't know what's going on in my life. I'm telling you today, my friend, there's a throne of grace. He says, Let us come boldly that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For the believer, bad experiences happen to drive us to our knees and to God. For the unbeliever, bad experiences happen to bring someone to the, faith, or to the place where they look at God and say, God, I need you. I've gone as far as I can. I want to challenge you with this thought today. Your problems will never exceed the ability of God to handle them. Paul said, not that I respect, not that I speak in respect of want. We've taken this as a theme verse when we moved to Indiana. He says, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. He says, whatever's going on in your life, you need to be content. Paul says, I know how to obey, to be a base, I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer and need. And he said in verse number 13 of Philippians chapter 4, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Why do bad things happen? Why do bad experiences happen? To bring us to the place where we realize that we need God. See, for the believer, the bad experiences of this life are as bad as it's going to get. For the believer in this room today, you say, Preacher, you just don't know what my life has been like. I'm telling you, my friend, on the other side over there, there's a much better life. But for the unbeliever, the bad experiences of this life are nothing to be compared to an eternity in hell. People ask, why is life so unfair? Why? Why? When really what we ought to be asking is, how should I respond? God, what are you trying to teach me? Christian, will you run to, run to God for strength today? Non-Christian, will you run to God today for salvation? If I were in this auditorium today, and if I reviewed my life and realized that there's never been a time that I could remember that I... Realized that I was a sinner and I trusted Christ as my Savior. If I could look back at my life and say, you know what? I don't remember a time or a place like that. I believe that today, as soon as I missed the invitation was given, that I would run up here so that someone could take a Bible and show me how to be saved. If I were a Christian today that has been struggling with some things going on in my life, and if I reviewed my life over the last month or six months or the last year or the last ten years, and I found myself asking the why question, more that I've been asking, Lord, how can I respond or what can I learn from this? And I believe when the invitation is given that I would run to this altar today and go ahead and make those things right with God. You'll never be happy in this lifetime consistently asking why. 
Everyone has had bad experiences. And I'm going to go ahead and help you out. I'm going to give you some encouragement today. Are you ready? You're going to keep on having them. The question is this. Are we going to be wanderers? Are we going to be wanderers? Or are we going to be worshipers? Often the outcome to a situation is directly affected by our reaction to it. We can know. Paul said, I know that all things work together for good. We can know that when we place our faith and our trust in the one that works all things out. Are you trusting today? If you're a believer today, are you really trusting Him? Is your life a demonstration of a faith-filled life? If not, why not today go ahead and yield that to Him? If you're here this morning and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, why not come today and trust Him as your Savior? Let's have